Battlelord's plethora of mods has given rise to some of the most creative implementations to the game. With Tailwoods recently really upping the skills and modding tools given out to players, people have really been able to show their worth. Whether it's small additions, tweaks to the mechanics, or full overhauls, there is nothing quite like the Mountain Blade modding community. But there is something bigger coming on the horizon, some way larger and more exciting projects. These are the five biggest Battlelord overhaul mods coming to Mountain Blade. This video is brought to you by Opera GX, the next generation of gaming browsers. Being completely free, Opera GX lets you use GX control to limit and customize the CPU and RAM usage of your system, so it isn't taken up by unimportant things that aren't like playing CSGO. Also, control the ban limit of your internet to make sure your browser isn't hogging all of your ping. The Opera GX player lets you use any of your favorite music streaming sites, from Apple Music to Spotify, YouTube music to Tidal to Deezer, anything you can think of is all inbuilt within GX Player. Furthermore, the amount of extensions that can be downloaded goes further than you could ever imagine. From WhatsApp to Facebook Messenger, Discord and Twitter extensions, even VPNs directly inbuilt to Opera GX itself, password managers, translators, the list goes on and on and on. And they're all integrated within your custom workspace. A custom workspace that has tons of settings for different colors, animations, adding your own backgrounds, desktops, even background music for while you're browsing. Opera GX also offers the ability to use on your phone and connect to the desktop version for seamless use between. Once again, it is completely free. So make sure you click the link in the description to check out Opera GX today. Bear costumes, gold bikinis, sabers, twin on twin action. No, I'm not talking about my recent search history, but Star Wars. And my god, it is coming to Mountain Blade. Separatist Crisis is technically out in some basic stages, but it has many core features that haven't been implemented just yet. A complete recreation of the Star Wars galaxy, from planets to space to motherships and bounty hunters. You can play as the Jedi, Sith, Separatist, Republic, Hut Cartel, or Mandalorian. These six different storylines are either taken through a sandbox or set path and campaign. Separatist Crisis looks gorgeous. The assets and models that we've been shown and teased so far are another level. And even what I've been able to play as the clones and the Mandalorians is fantastic. The Battle of Geonosis is a map that's already been implemented and more custom maps are on the way. There is not only the hope to be able to play on planets within the battles, but also have a campaign map that is set across multiple planets and the galaxy. Being able to play as a Jedi and moving up through the ways of the Force and skill that way, or if guns are more your thing, being a Mandalorian with a jetpack and maybe even a baby Grogu if you manage to steal them from the right place. Slave trading in the Outer Rim, fighting good versus evil and becoming the strongest power in the galaxy. Galactic Conquest was a massive mod for Mountain Blade Warband. It was the pinnacle of Star Wars modifications for that game and they did so well with it and I really hope that Separatist Crisis is able to just recreate parts of that and it will be one of the biggest and best modifications that we're going to see in Bannerlord. Rome is an incredibly popular culture that us historical nerds seem to be able to eat up whatever the game. However, Mountain Blade has always thrived on its many ancient modifications. Warband had Mountain Gladius, Bellum Imperii, and the the other ones. Yet Battlelord seems to be going down that similar angle as well. One of the first mods for the game, in fact, was Eagle Rising. It was Imperial Rome and one of the most beautiful and well-fleshed out modifications. The result of Eagle Rising being one of the first to the table meant a complete and total advancement through modifications further than we'd really ever seen before. Eagle Rising has become so content rich and popular that we even recently gained full Carthage faction implementation and many many more to come. Resident, can you stop going on about Eagle Rising? We get it. You like it. <sighs> you're, you're right. I do this too much. However, today is actually not one of those days. I'm not even talking about Eagle Rising here. I mean, for starters, this is about upcoming mods, right? Eagle Rising has already released, but Burning Empires hasn't. It's been over a millennia since the birth of Rome. As the city grew from a collective to a republic and finally into an empire, its reach is vast and territory expansive. Barbarians continue to threaten Rome's stability. Saxon rages have reached Britannia's shores in search of plunder and glory, whilst the Picts cross Hadrian's Wall and the Scots depart Hibernia to pillage Roman lands. Will Rome weather this crisis or will she crumble? 
Boning Empires is one of the most promising upcoming overhaul mods, and it is of course set in ancient Rome. 24 major starting factions with 20 minor starting factions, a complete religion system, quests, a campaign mode, 50 plus companions, most of them based around historical characters with unique backstories, 150 historical notables across the world, there'll be full sea travel, with of course reconstruction of all the ancient cities and wonders of the world at the time. With this, there'll be world events that would have happened throughout history that you'll be able to play out and react to in Mountain Blade. There's of course going to be your general factions of Rome, Barbarians, and so on and so forth. Yet there will be some cool unique additions such as War Elephants, something that we have seen small clips of in the past. Burning Empires looks fantastic, and I for one cannot wait for this Roman overhaul modification. Did you know, to prepare for the role in The Last Samurai, Tom Cruise went to Starbucks every day to order a frappuccino, just so he could be as white as possible. I don't know if that's true, but some guy outside Home Bargains was giving out facts for money, so I'll give you that little tidbit for free. Shokuo, though, is the spiritual successor to the ever-famous and widely praised Gekko Kuju mod for Warband, embracing the last of medieval Japan. From a scavenger to a samurai, to a leader of men, forging alliances and enemies within the land of the rising sun, Shokuo is wanting to take Gekko Kuju and take it further than ever before. The year is 1508, in the far aftermath of the disastrous Onin War and the infighting of the feudal clans across. In Japan, turmoil is rife and has turned the lands into bountiful prey for all wrongs of society. You've been thrown into the Sengoku Jidai, the warring states era of Japan. In your hands lies the power to craft your own destiny, whether you take up a sword or brush in hand. It is up to you to carve your own way throughout Japan and make a name for yourself, be that through cunning or brute force. I have to say, this modification is boasting some of the most beautiful scenery. The custom maps and mod assets that Tailwords of Let Modders implement has never been shown off the way that it is going to be in Shokuo. I mean, look at this goddamn stuff. These screenshots are another level. Let's hope that we can truly honor what Gekikuju brought us with this next installment of Medieval Japan in Mountain Blade. Maybe intricate armor designs and testicle armor is more your thing though. Well, Del Art Della Guerra has you covered on that front, and, well, the testicle thing as well. A new modification set during the late stages of the War of the Roses, I mean, a criminally underrated period of time. By that, I don't mean that people at the time should have enjoyed it more, I'm sure many of them hated dying, but I mean it's not covered all that much by modern media. I mean, we had that War of the Roses game back in 2012, that didn't last all that long, and there were a few modifications here and there from Out of Blade Warband about the War of the Roses, but it was never quite delved into all that much. However, this modification is looking to change that. So far, we've only seen some basic screenshots, but I mean, the armor design is absolutely next level. In terms of weapons, there's going to be quite a lot to get your hands into. Of course, lances will be there, poleaxes, hammers, swords, maces, full plate armor or peasant weapons. Pikes are coming in with, of course, billmen bills. Moreover, some beautifully handmade stitching to show off the colors, whether you are from the beautiful country of Yorkshire or the others. The Deluge 2 with Fire and Sword is a very promising and hyped mod coming to Bannerlord. Perhaps the final one on this list, but definitely not to any of its detriment. The Deluge was a mod for Mountain Blade Warband that brought the cruel and bloody wars of the 17th century, given the opportunity to choose between seven different factions with historically accurate troops. Whether you are fighting land with pikes and muskets, or on sea with cannons and marines, this is now coming to Bannerlord. Now, of course, Mountain Blade Warband doesn't have the players these days. It's not quite as active as it once was, but maybe Bannerlord's version of this modification can bring something back. One of the most unique things that this modification did for Warband was bringing in ship warfare, something that had never been done, especially in a multiplayer sense. In fact, it was done so well that I think it was one of the main reasons we eventually got naval vessels in the Napoleonic Wars official DLC from Tailworlds. The Deluge was another level of complete game-changing mechanical upgrades and I think it's going to be exactly the same within Bannerlord. So I, for one, cannot 
wait for it. I'm sure you'll all be in the comments saying there's many more like Sword and Musket, the Napoleonic Wars mod, Kingdoms of Arda, the Lord of the Rings modification that's just had a new dev blog, the Witcher Northern Wars. I, I could go on and on because there's so many massive overhaul mods coming to the game. However, I kind of wanted to include stuff that hadn't been talked about all that much, stuff that I hadn't personally made solo videos on. Of course, there are a few overlaps here, but mostly I wanted to do something a little bit different. So if you guys want to go and check out any of these modifications, there'll be links in the description to all their mod DB pages. As mentioned, a couple of them have early versions out, but most of them aren't quite released to this point. But let me know what your favorite upcoming mods for Banlord are down in the comments below. But until then, I will see you in the next one.